Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. My name is Wiley Drake, and we're live. Pastor the... Manning, Pastor Manning, Pastor Manning. Well, good morning, Mr. Manning, Dr. Manning, the Honorable James David Manning, ladies and gentlemen, here on the <laughs> Wiley, Wiley, Wiley Show from the Upper Room <laughs> Prayer Room in Southern California. We're only a mile and four tenths from the famous Knott's Berry Farm. We're four and a half miles to Disneyland, and we're only 21 miles from Hollywood. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the Upper Room Prayer Room upstairs. Uh, that's why we call it the Upper Room. See how slick we are? Uh, <laughs> but uh, my wife suggested this about 25 years ago. She said, honey, you've got some good sermons on the Upper Room Scriptures. Why don't we have an upper room prayer room? And I said, well, we do have an upper room conference room. She said, let's make it a prayer room. And so we did that 25 years ago. She's now been in heaven a little over five years. And uh, Barbara, if the Lord's letting you look down here, we're still keeping the prayer room going for you, baby. And Dr. James Davis. Uh, Dr. Drake, Dr. Yes. Drake, Dr. Yes. Drake, I got to get you another wife. I, I, I thank God for the work of Barbara. Uh, she is memorialized. They're in your church, and uh, and it was her, Barbara, your wife, Mrs. Drake, Sister Drake, yes. uh, that, that talked about me. And I, I will forever honor her as long as I possibly can. However, I have got to ask permission. I got I to gotta find another wife for you. I got to find another I, I got to find another wife. So uh, I, I, I got to get on the air and tell people <laughs> that Dr. Drake is not married. He is a preacher. So <laughs> it's not bad. So, doctor, uh, expect me to be doing that. But, well, thank you, uh, we brother. Give honor. And in and in October, we, in October the twenty third, which is one month before my birthday, October the twenty third, I will be a widower, uh, six years. So uh, I'm. I think I'm about ready. <laughs> Amen, uh, brother. I, I, Amen. I'm going to put the word out and, 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 and see what we'll come back with. Uh, and I will perform the wedding ceremony. In fact, you know, Dr. Drake, I was, uh, I don't know if you know John B. Wells, the, uh, the, the broadcaster. Yeah. The big broadcast out of, out of Texas. Anyway, uh, I was on his broadcast some time ago, and then I was, uh, I interviewed a woman from South Africa. What's her name, a South African woman? Mm. Brindy Richards. I interviewed oh. her from South Africa. She did find a mighty battle over there in South Africa. Yeah. And John Wells heard her, and he had on his broadcast. Well, that was about four or five years ago. Well, guess what? The two of them have now hooked up, nice. and they're asking me to come down to Fort Worth and perform the wedding ceremony. So I'm on my way to Fort Worth to perform, to perform the wedding ceremony of two people that met on the Manic Report, if you will. Amen. So, uh, well, praise the Lord. I'll have to, I'll have to perform the wedding ceremony uh, for you, Dr. Drake, you will not be allowed to ask anybody else to do that except well, me. I, I so certainly wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't, and I wouldn't ask anybody else for two reasons. Number one, because you're my pastor. But number two, because my wife Barbara, <laughs> if I tried to have somebody else do it, she'd be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> and and after, listen, Doc. I, I, go ahead. I uh, I I I, I want to go ahead and. and uh, we've got several things that I, I, I need to do here. I, we've been missing in action on the prayer line. And I, today, I didn't even get a chance to tell people to call in. I pray that they have done so. Um, the, uh, I'm going to send a tweet out uh, every day uh, with the prayer line on it for the next Amen. six days. So the next Wednesday, uh, people can have it accessible um, from the tweet. And my tweets also go up on Facebook. But I just wanted to chime in today, um, and I think the lows are in Korea now. They're in South, South, South Korea, so I don't know if they're calling in. It's what? It's 12 o'clock at night over there now. Yeah. And so they're probably not going to be calling in today, and they may be, they're going to be in South Korea for a couple of weeks. So uh, you won't expect them to be chiming in. Sure. However, uh, I will be sending out a tweet, and I wanted to just call in and say a word of prayer today, and then I'm going to be going to be about my my Amen. other business that I have to do Amen. today. Amen, Pastor. Thank you for that, and please lead us in prayer. Let's go to the Lord Jesus. Uh, we come before you today with um, 
with, with much thanksgiving in our hearts uh, that you have saved us, washed us in your precious blood, taken our feet up out the muck and out of the mind. You've, you've established our ways. And for that, Almighty God, we're grateful. And today, Jesus, I just want to pray with, for the people that uh, have been in the path of hurricane, and it's your hurricane, uh, Matthew, uh, the Haitian people in particular, and others. And uh, Matthew has not fully run his course up the East Coast. So um, we understand that uh, you're in control of all things. And, uh, we believe that a number of people have lost their lives down there in Haiti, and probably people have lost their homes and, 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 and many with their health. I'm asking you, Almighty God, that uh, you would just send your blessings uh, into that land. Amen. That uh, the people might be strengthened. And I'm asking, Almighty God, that you would cause people to, to find out what ways they can help if they have a piece of bread on their table, if they have a fish in their basket, then maybe they can help somehow or another. You'll show them how to best use it. And then, Jesus, I'm praying for people who maybe woke up this morning and weren't feeling quite so well and went to bed last night and were not in the best of spirits. The dark clouds of depression may have been about them and about their existence and about their lives. Questions about their future may have been imminent, both going to lying down and arising up. I'm asking Almighty God that you would heal them and that you would you'd let them know that you are Lord, that you are Savior, and that, that they would be blessed. And, and those that are physically sick, that you would heal them, that they might have the full use and activity of their limbs. And I pray, I pray for tables and families that there be food on the table, that the fathers would be in the homes. There's so many homes without fathers and so many tables without food. Yeah. I pray, yeah. Almighty God, that uh, you would bless the tables, and I pray that uh, that you would, would would give me the strength and others to stop the killings of babies in our nation. Jesus, it's, yeah. we we can we 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 ought to be ashamed to call ourselves Americans, mm. killing so many babies mm. and killing them in the womb. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Amen. Uh, even just saying that we're Americans, we ought to be ashamed of waving the flag or singing any song because we've, we've killed so many of the innocents who never had a chance to breathe free. Mm. But thank God you have received them. Lord, let us understand what a tragedy this is, that we might rise up and put an end to this suffering yes. and killing of the children. Yes. And Jesus just strengthened everybody on the prayer line today. Strengthen everybody on the prayer line. Almighty God, give them power, give them wisdom, give them under, give them the desires of their hearts to glorify you in everything that they do and say. And in your name, Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. hallelujah. Amen. And a boom shakalaka goes right there. <laughs> right there. Amen. Uh, and Dr. Manning, Dr. You Manning before there, you go, God. before you go, let me give you, well, I believe we lost him anyway. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Well, what I was going to tell him is, is at 3 o'clock this afternoon in New York, we're going to be doing a live show from here uh, downstairs with a man by the name of Phil Haney. We're going to have uh, Mr. Phil Haney, a former director and investigator for Homeland Security put together a package called See Something, Say Something. And then later was told, no, don't say nothing. And so he wrote a book now about it called See Something, Say Nothing. We're going to be talking with that author this afternoon at 3 o'clock in New York. He will be here in California with us at 12 noon today. And you're welcome to call on the call on the prayer line and listen in to our interview and to our conversation with Philip Haney. And uh, we welcome you to do that on the call. And we thank you. Is anybody else on the prayer line with us? Yes. Hannah from Jersey. Good morning, Miss Hannah from New Jersey. When you get a chance, um, when you get a chance after you get off the phone with us, Dr. Manning got off before I could tell him. At 3 o'clock this afternoon, we're going to have Phil Haney. That's 3 o'clock New York time. We're going to have mm -hmm. Phil Haney on the program, 
and you or anybody else can call in on the prayer line and hear Phil Haney talk about his book called See Something, Say Nothing. And if you'd call Dr. Manning and tell him that, I'd appreciate it. Okay, it's um, 3 p.m. our time? That's right, yes, ma'am. 3 p.m. your time. Okay, and we'll call the same number? Uh, it's on a call-in number, yeah. We'll have that call-in number open. All right, sure, yes. Thank you very much. And how can we well, pray? How can we pray for you, Sister Hannah? Ladies and gentlemen, this yeah, is. Yes, well, I'm in agreement with you know what Pastor just prayed. Um, we just continue to lift up Haiti, and we pray um, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would have mercy, that you would provide all that they stand in need of, and we thank you for Dr. Manning for Pastor um, organizing and putting yeah. our resources together to be able to help them in whatever way we can. And we we'll just pray that you would have mercy on Haiti, and um, we lift up the other places. This is a possibility of the hurricane coming as well. And we're just asking you that you would use us um, mm -hmm. for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Hannah, thank you. Sister Hannah is a member of Atla World Community Church, which is where Pastor uh, James David Manning, Honorable James David Manning, is the pastor, and where I have the privilege of being an assistant pastor to him. And so we thank you. Uh, Lord Jesus for members like Sister Hannah who lives in New Jersey but commutes to New York. I used to do that back a long, long time ago, not for church but for a job I had. I had to be downtown New York but I lived in Jersey. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Sister Hannah. Anything else we can pray for you about? Um, that's the main thing. Well, I just started a new um, a Christian bookstore online, so I'm asking the Lord to just bless it and give me lots of um, clients and customers and that he would use it for his glory. <laughs> well, amen, sister. And one of the things that we do here on this program, not just for our friends, but for anyone who is Bible-based, and especially our friends, if somebody's looking for that Christian bookstore online, yes. how do they find it? They'll go to www.faithlovegift.com, and um, also the other domain is cherishjesus.com. C-H-E-R-I-S-H-J-E-S. Yes, and then jesus.com. Okay, now what was the first? And then the other domain is faith, S-A-I-T-H, love, L-O-V-E, gift, G-I-F-T-S.com. Okay, now the, fir the first one then is faithlovegift.com? Yes, yes. All right, and uh, that's just... That's the, actual, that's the actual bookstore, and then cherishjesus.com is the blog that I'm doing that's connected to Faith Love Gift. Okay, all right, so if I want to find out about this uh, bookstore online, I go to faithlovegift.com. Yes, gifts with an S at the end. Oh, gifts, plural. Okay, G-I-F-T-S. Yes. All right, faithlovegifts.com for the bookstore. Yes. And then the blog is at cherishjesus.com. Yes, I'm well, very excited about it. And um, I thank God we had a wonderful time at the Atlas Celebration. The Lord really met us, and I just believe... Um, He's birthed a lot of things on the inside of us because the vision of Atla is to become, well, 50,000 righteous men being leaders, men being leaders in their home, the community, and the church. Um, it's also to have businesses. I believe God has given me this. And also, um, Pastor has prayed over us that, Lord's willing, by this time next year, that we will be able to purchase home in Atla. So I, I just believe God has given me the deed to a property in Atla. And um, it's just awesome what God has done, you know, inside of us during this whole um, celebration. <laughs> well, my sister, we were praying with you and for you, and I couldn't be boots on the ground, but I was yes. prayer in the air several times at that outlaw celebration, and I'm so sorry I couldn't make it. But uh, we prayed for you, prayed with you, and ladies and Thanks. gentlemen, uh, pray for Atla, pray for the Honorable James David Manning and Sister Hannah, and go to that faithlovegifts.com, faithlovegifts, that's with an S, gifts.com, 
And uh, then the other blog is cherishjesus.com. Go to that and uh, give me a call and let me know what you think about it. I'd love to hear your comments about it. And uh, tell your friends, if they come on your line, that they're welcome to call in on this prayer line and share about their experience with your bookstore and with your cherishjesus.com. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, is there anyone else on the prayer line with us? The prayer line is open. It's what we call an old-fashioned party line. That is, Sister Hannah's still on the line. You can call right now while she's still on the line. Dr. Manning was on the line, but he had to go. And anybody else, if you're on the line, you don't have to identify yourself. We appreciate it if you do, but we know that we deal with a lot of subjects here. And some people might not like to be identified. And so we don't identify you. Uh, we just ask you to call in and pray and share. So is there anybody else on the line that would like to share? All right, we're going to proceed then with our prayer. And the Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. Now, every one of us, just about, whether we're a big mouth preacher or a silent, quiet sister like Sister Hannah, we can all, though, get hot about items. We can be fervent. That's what the word fervent means. The word fervent, it says we're to pray fervent prayer. That's a hot prayer. And we're to be hot about sin. We're to be hot about good and bad and all in between. So we can pray a fervent prayer. But the other part of that instruction is that we're not only to have a hot prayer, fervent prayer, but we're to have an effectual prayer. That's why we ask you to share your prayer request so we can be more effective for you in our prayer line. And the reason we announce, for example, that we're going to have Phil Haney, Philip Haney on, is not just to brag on him or brag on who we've got on the show. That nothing wrong with that, but we do it for another reason, and that is if we want to effectively pray, we need to mention his name, Philip Haney. And so that's how we are effective in our prayer. And at 12 noon today, California time, that will be 3 o'clock East Coast time, we're going to have a special prayer meeting with Phil Haney doing an interview and sharing back and forth, and you can ask him questions. You just have to call in on his prayer line number, and you can do that. So that's how we are affected. We're also affected by the fact that tonight, uh, after he is with us, he's going to be down with an organization called ACT, A-C-T, for America. ACT for America is headed up by a sweet, sweet sister in the Lord. She's sweet in Jesus. She's sweet in her attitude. She's a bulldog. She'll grab the devil by the tail in a heartbeat, but she's a sweet sister, and her name is Brigitte Gabrielle, and uh, she lived in Lebanon at one time. In fact, she lived in a bombed-out piece of bomb shelter, and uh, Quite a few days, her and her mama only had grass to eat and water that would trickle in from the rain. That's all they had. Good morning and welcome to the First Southern Baptist Church televised prayer meeting. If you'd like to share on television, go ahead. If not, you can call me back after the top of the hour. I'll be off TV. Hello? Are you there? Hello, are you there? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay, I was. I received an email about this uh, Convention of States, uh, about Article 5 in the Constitution. Uh, I'm wondering what people think about that. Well, brother, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, can you tell us okay. what it's about? Uh, I don't know. According to the email, uh, it's about states' rights. Uh, Article 5 is about states' rights, I guess, if the federal government becomes out of control, etc. Um, so I just wondered what people would think about that. Uh, probably if you Google it, you can find out more. And, All right, and I'll, uh, I'll, 
have uh, I'll have Mr. Davis follow up on that, and we'll talk about it later when we have uh, okay. more time to evaluate it. Okay, well, God bless. I know well, what it is. Thank you. Keep praying and keep working. Amen, thank brother. You. We'll do that. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Okay, bye now. All right, that was one of our faithful prayer watch people, prayer callers. Uh, Mr. Davis, do you know what he's talking about? I, I yeah, he's talking about how you go about making amendments to the Constitution. And under the Constitution, there's two ways to do it, one of which is what's called a state convention. Uh, and that where you get, uh, I think you have to have two-thirds of the states that all agree that they're going to have a convention. I got you. And okay. then change, propose whatever the amendment is. Okay. Um, right now, the uh, politicians are terrified of that. Yeah. Because obviously, once the convention is set up, they can vote in whatever they want, and it will completely override what's going on. And vote out whatever they want to vote Correct. Out. So <laughs> what we're looking at right now, the two big issues on it is voting term limits by constitutional amendment for Congress people, which obviously is driving Congress crazy. Yeah. Uh, the other one is uh, issues in regards to restricting, reducing federal control over states' issues. Mm. So that that is a, a movement that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, I understand, last time I checked, I think, and please excuse me if I'm making a mistake, but I think that 20 states have agreed to the convention so far, mm. but we need 30, I think either 32 or 33 states to agree to it. Okay. Well, uh, since you have nothing else to do, uh, <laughs> I'll put that uh, on your plate to uh, get back to us and get us some more information on that. The reason we can be effectual is because effectual has to do with the details. We can say, oh, let's just pray and hope God will bless the world and bless America and God bless America. Nothing wrong with that. However, the Bible says, we're to pray effectually. <clears throat> that is, know what we're praying about. That's why I'm asking Dr. Davis to look that up and get us more information. And we'll come back with some effectual uh, information that we can pray an effectual prayer for. So pray an effectual prayer today. Uh, in a, uh, about three hours, we're going to be with uh, uh, Phil Haney here at the church. and You can listen in, if you'd like, on a prayer line. Uh, and that'll be 3 o'clock for you folks back there on the uh, East Coast. And we thank the Lord. Now, many of you have heard me talk about one of the ways that I want us to be effectual. Many of you know that at least once a month, usually on the third Saturday of the month, we try to put wheels and feet to our prayer. And so we get a van on the third Saturday and we meet here at the church about nine o'clock and we drive over to Hollywood and we drive around each one of the six or seven major movie producing organizations like Sony TV, like Disney TV, like Universal uh, TV, uh, uh, Warner Brothers, and I can't remember them all, but that's why we go over there. We drive around them. We go up there in their driveway or on their parking lot if they'll allow us. And we say, Jesus, hold our hands up and say, Jesus is Lord over Universal. Jesus is Lord over Sony. And so we pray over the major uh, uh, producers there in Hollywood and L.A. and Burbank and those areas. So... Uh, we do that. That's how we pray effectually, and we would encourage you to do that. We're thankful, so thankful for what God has done. There's a revival going on in Hollywood, and I'm not talking about the revival of Hollywood. I'm talking about the revival of Christian movies. There's been more Christian movies released in the last two or three years than over the last 20 years. <coughs> Excuse me, and we thank the Lord for that. <laughs> there is one that's coming up that's in theaters as we speak. And the title of the movie is called Voiceless. 
voiceless is dealing with what we were just talking about with Dr. Manning and others about the voiceless, the little baby in the womb that are murdered that have no voice. I guarantee you, you ask any of them babies, you want to live? They'd say, amen, yes. But they're voiceless because somebody murders them before they get to say, hey, let me live. So uh, there was a story, and I'm going to tell you briefly about the movie because you ought to go see the movie. It's a great movie. Uh, the title of the movie is Voiceless. It's about a young man who was a pastor in a community. He was called there to be their pastor, and it was more uh, seniors and so forth. And uh, he, he really uh, was ministering to those people, but uh, became very concerned that right across the street from the church was a baby murdering place, a Planned Parenthood <clears throat> baby murdering facility. And so he said, that ought not be anywhere, and especially across the street from the church. And so he went over there, and he began to protest. And he asked some of his people to go there and protest this voiceless murdering of those children that have no voice. We, he said, want to be a voice. Well, a lot of the people said, oh, preacher, you're messing up. You're getting us involved in politics. We don't like that, yada, yada, yada. That's what the movie is about. It's about a young preacher that said, I want to be the voice for the voiceless. And so that's the story of the movie. I won't tell you any more about the movie because you want to go see it. But I would encourage you, find out. Go to Google, Google Voiceless, the movie, and find out where it's at. And I would encourage you to do so. Now, there is another group that we work with that's called Survivors. Survivors. And they are survivors.la. They're a group of young people who call themselves survivors. Not of the Holocaust of Germany. They're younger than not of the Holocaust of other things, but they call themselves survivors because they have been born. They were born from 1973 forward. So if you were born after 1973, you are a survivor of the abortion of the Holocaust. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Welcome to the First Southern Baptist Church televised prayer meeting. If you'd like to share prayer on television, go ahead. If you'd like to talk to me privately, you'll have to call back at the top of the hour. Hello? Hello? Can I help you? Hello? Hello? Yes, hi. Can I help you? All right. Do you have court-appointed community service? Uh, I'm currently in a DUI court program, and it is appointed. Uh, the shift in running in, and I'm Well, sir, let me, let me tell you what we'll be glad to do for you. We are a church, and we are appointed by the Superior Court of Orange County. And we can, indeed, uh, write you a letter, put it on letterhead that says, Mr. So-and-so has done so many hours of community service. And we'll certify that on a written letter signed by me, the pastor, and uh, okay, you, great. and you can take that letter to the court, and uh, uh, that 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 usually suffices. Right, that's exactly what I would need. Okay, all you got to do. Is, I've, I've, uh, I, I, you know, I've never spoke to you. I don't think I've ever even seen you there. I've heard of you, <laughs> but um, just 
thank you for all the services you do provide when I was really down and out there for the park. I, uh, I, that's why I want to go back there and provide uh, some community service there. Well, you, so, you simply... You simply come here and show up at the security office and tell okay. them that you would like to do community service. Now, they will ask you for your paperwork, and, right. if, and if you don't have paperwork, you right. need to tell them you need to talk to Pastor Wiley Drake, and I will right. write you up a letter after you complete your hours, however how many hours you complete, my people certify it to me, I will write a letter based on their certification that you have done X number of hours here at our church and homeless shelter, and awesome. you and you can take that to the judge. Okay, and uh, when can I go in for the hours? Well, anytime you can come by anytime. Okay, so I'll be there today. Okay. Awesome, and uh, so I think his name's Will, right? Yeah, Will Ruffin. Just just tell Will that you talk to me, and that okay. uh, we need to have a letter for you. Because he'll ask you, well, where's your paperwork? Because usually, usually the court gives you a piece of paper that you got to have signed. Right. right. But I have a program. I'm, I'm like kind of, it's through the courts. It's through probation, as a matter of fact. That's what it is. And so probation doesn't provide that paperwork. Okay. Well, we'll give you a letter. Basically, it's real simple. We just use church letterhead, and I sign it, and we tell how many hours you worked, and then whatever you do with it, that's between you and the Lord. Awesome. Thank okay. you for all you do. Okay, bye-bye. And my name's, my name's Jerry, by the way. Okay, oh, Jerry. Well, just come see us here. We'll be glad to help you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's why I answer my phone. Quite often when I answer my phone, it's an example of our ministry and what we do. There's a man. Typically, when you go to court, the judge says, okay, I'm going to give you 50 hours of community service. Go over to the center, the volunteer center, and sign up, and they give you a piece of paper, and you come out, you pay about 60 bucks, and they give you a piece of paper, and you come and you work, and we sign that paper. Well, this is a little different situation. This is a thing where he's in another kind of school and so forth, and, and they don't have the paperwork, and so we can, we'll create paperwork. We'll create a letterhead, and that's how we do. That's what we do, folks. That's how we do it. Now, back to the movie Voiceless. It's about those babies who've been brutally murdered that have no voice. And it's about a pastor who says, I'm going to speak for those unborn babies. And he gets in trouble. And that's what the movie's about. Now, the movie is in the theaters now. And uh, the group I was telling you about, Survivors.LA, they have an organization and they demonstrate at Planned Parenthood and other places uh, for pro-life. And they call themselves survivors.la. Not all of them, but most of them are from the Los Angeles area. And they call themselves survivors.la. If you'd like to check them out, you go to their website. It's real simple, survivors.la. Uh, I think it's .com, but just survivors.la will get you there. Now. Uh, they demonstrate, they march, they do a lot of things. And they say, if you're born since 1973, you're a survivor. You survived the Holocaust of abortion. And that's why they call themselves survivors. And so uh, this Saturday, the movie that I talked about, Voiceless, is going to be uh, shown in a lot of places. But one particular place it's going to be shown is over near my daughter's house in Redlands. She lives in Highland. And so they're going to be showing that movie in Redlands on this Saturday and this Sunday. And survivors are doing, they have bought out two theaters, or a theater, so that people can go to that movie and see the movie Voiceless. And if you'd like to go to that movie, you can go on your own and uh, just go see the movie. But Survivors is asking you to buy tickets ahead of time because they've already bought the theater out and they'd like to get their money back, you know, uh, for those tickets. But if you'd like to go, it's uh, going to be at the Harkins, H-A-R-K-I-N-S, 
Harkins Mountain, Harkins Mountain Grove 16. That's the name of the movie. And it's at 27 481 San Bernardino Avenue. That's right out where Dr. Davis and I were at the San Bernardino shooting. So it's Harkins Mountain Grove 16 at 27481 San Bernardino Avenue, Redlands, California, 92374. And uh, they're going to be showing that on Saturday at 3 o'clock. That's when the movie is going to be shown, at 3 o'clock on Saturday. Well, I've got this crazy idea, because I happen to be the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference, that at 2 o'clock, outside the theater, on the public sidewalk, we're going to hold a prayer meeting. We're going to pray for that movie. We've already prayed for it, but we're going to pray for it again. We're going to go over there, at least I am, and anybody that wants to go with me. We're going to go to the Harkins Mountain Grove 16. The Wiley Drake Show, compliments of the Congressional Prayer Conference, will be on location at 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, we'll be on location. And if you'd like to come meet a movie star, you'd like to come meet the host of a TV talk show, you'd like to come meet a grandpa of a whole bunch of grandkids, <laughs> you're welcome to come meet me. I'd love to have you come there and meet me. And if you come and you join us in prayer, I'll buy you a theater ticket. If you come and join us in prayer, I'm not going to pass them out on the sidewalk because I don't have much money, because the tickets are 10 bucks. So, uh, but if you come to the prayer meeting and you'll agree to spend a few minutes in prayer for the movie, for the actors, and for the people who see the movie, I'll buy you a ticket to the theater. And so, all you gotta do is show up. And we'll do that. Now, where do you show up? Well, you gotta be there at two o'clock. Movie don't go to three, but two o'clock, you got to do, but you got to be do a couple of things. Number one, you got to be there at two o'clock. Number two, you got to be willing to pray. If you don't know how to pray, we'll teach you. We'll give you a quickie lesson in how to pray outside of theater, and how to pray for a movie. And so, if you don't know how to pray, that's no excuse. We'll teach you on that day. So at two o'clock, we would encourage you to join us. I'll buy you a theater ticket if you come. If you're there at two o'clock and you're willing to pray. Now, the way you go is you go to Harkins Mountain Grove 16. Harkins Mountain Grove 16. 27481. 27481 San Bernardino Avenue. Redlands, California. 92374. And so, let's go to the movie. Here on uh, Saturday nights, quite often, we have Saturday nights at the movie at the church. And we're going to have to get that going again. We had Brother Life was doing that for us, and I don't know how to do it. And i got to get Frank or somebody to show me how to do it, because we've been showing some good movies. And by the way, the price is right. It's free. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we want you to pray. Pray for survivors.la. Go to that website. Go to Google or wherever you search, Bing or Bat or Bone or whatever you search through, and uh, pull up Voiceless. Voiceless the movie. And we would encourage you to do that. Check it out. And we would encourage you. I'd love to meet some of you on Saturday at a prayer meeting at 2 o'clock. Hello and welcome to the Congressional Prayer Meeting, California style. If you'd like to pray online on television, go ahead. If not, and you'd like to talk to me, you can call me back after the show is over, and that will be at the top of the hour. Hello? I guess they don't want to pray. That's okay. That doesn't make me mad. 
doesn't even kick me off. I'll take the call anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to be effectual. We want to effectually pray for the movie. We want to effectually pray for Phil Haney. We want to effectually pray for our nation. That's why we're doing what we're doing. So be a part of that. Now, also, I want to encourage you to be effectual again on this Lord's Day. This week is about over, folks. Uh, Monday, I mean uh, Sunday, is a new week. We start a new week on Sunday. And on Sunday, we're going to have a friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, is going to give me a little break. Uh, he's going to come and he's going to preach for us. And uh, as he comes and preaches, he's going to be here with us uh, for the Sunday service twice. We do a 945 service. And so Brother Will Ruffin normally teaches that. He's going to have a day off. He's got to be in church, but he'll not be teaching. And I'll be in church, but I'll not be preaching. Dr. Greg Dixon. Greg A. Dixon, the son of Dr. Greg Dixon from Indianapolis Baptist Temple, uh, will be with us and will preach for us at the Sunday school hour and at the worship hour at 11 o'clock. So come and be a part of that as well. You can be effective by going to church and hearing a great, mighty man of God. This man... Uh, is preaching in all kinds of places all over the country. But he is a great, mighty man of God. Here's just a little bit of the listing of what God is doing through him and how you can pray for him. He has a place there in Indianapolis called the Fuller Center for Housing of Central Indiana. I don't know the name Fuller, I do know some Fullers, but I don't know that Fuller. I would maybe a Fuller that I know, but but they have a center for housing there in Indiana, in Indianapolis. They also have a place called Transitional Living Space. We happen to have 52 of them here at our church. We call it a Transitional Living Program. They have one there in Indiana. They also have a thing called Trinity House. Trinity House, they describe it as a soup kitchen to provide nightly dinner and a gospel message. Well, somebody asked me one time, do you have a soup kitchen at your church? And I said, no, we have a feeding place at our church. Very seldom do we do soup. Most of the time, we do regular meals. Once in a while, we'll have soup. But typically, we're not a soup kitchen. I know what they're talking about, though. And so they do have a soup kitchen there at, at Indiana. And you know what they do? They not only feed people physical food, i.e. soup and whatever, but they feed them spiritual food. And that is what they call the gospel message. They also do a great deal of mission opportunities under the leadership of Dr. Greg Dixon. And their mission trips are for church planting, setting up new churches. They've started, I think, more than two dozen churches over the last few years, even though the IRS and the U.S. government bulldoze their church down there in Indianapolis and then they rebuilt and they have a bigger better building now than they had before and they started a lot of other churches as a result of it so continue to pray for them they also have something there because this is almost out of necessity when they were fighting their fight they didn't have Mr. Davis there to fight for them they didn't have other attorneys like Matt Staver from Liberty Council. They didn't have an attorney, so they started their own center. They have a biblical law center, and they have attorneys that help them, and so they have a biblical law center. So on Sunday, 
at 945. Be here at the church. Uh, let's effectually pray for Greg Dixon. Pray for his wife. She's not able to be with him this trip. And uh, I know he don't like that. And I know she don't like that. But they're willing to sacrifice and be separate for a while because of the ministry. So pray for them uh, this Sunday. They'll, they'll be here for this Sunday. And then we want to remind you, uh, we only have about 12 minutes left. Mr. Davis, is there anything that you would like to share at this point? Well, certainly the social media and news have been making a big deal about last night's uh, debate between the vice president's uh, nominees. Apparently, the general belief is that uh, Mr. Pence won, um, so that's fine. Um, they surprisingly talked very badly about the Democratic vice president nominee saying that he was very immature. So I think that's interesting. They certainly went into a lot more uh, details on things. However, they still didn't go into a whole lot of detail about Benghazi. So that, that <laughs> Everybody be... is avoiding Benghazi. Correct. So uh, hopefully that's an issue that will be brought up at the next presidential candidates debate. And in the meantime, we will continue to uh, broadcast information relating to Benghazi, especially in light of uh, what's going to happen here on the 25th. Yeah. Well, on the 25th of this month, which is pretty, pretty close around the corner, we're going to have an event that is going to highlight Benghazi. In fact, at the highlighting events, two of them, the man that was blamed for Benghazi. In fact, I would encourage you, if you'd like to see the article, go to Fox News and put in the reporter's name, <coughs> Holly McKay. <coughs> Holly McKay. She is an international correspondent for Fox News. And she wrote an article on the Benghazi issue. In fact, she says the title of her article is Blamed for Benghazi. The movie producer is homeless and poor. And he lives in a homeless shelter. And guess whose homeless shelter he lives in? And guess whose soup kitchen he eats in? Right here at the First Southern Baptist Church. So... On the 25th, we're going to have two <coughs> events that you can attend to be brought up to date on the Benghazi issue. First of all, there's a gentleman that is a New York Times bestseller author. He's written lots of books. Two of the books that he's written that have been <coughs> New York Times bestsellers, one of them is called Dark Forces the truth about Benghazi. And the newest book is called Deception, which is a deception that Obama, that is Barry Satoro, and Hillary, thunder thighs, I call her, but uh, I'll try not to be too terrible on her, but, but anyway, uh, this, uh, this new movie, now, now by the way, Ken Timmerman would not use that kind of terminology. That's why he's a New York Times uh, author, and I'm not, uh, because he knows how to choose the right word. Maybe. But anyway, uh, we are going to be having two events. At that event, Ken Timmerman will be there to talk about his book, Dark Forces, and also the new movie, Deception. And in the auspices of Hollywood, uh, Mr. Davis will be doing his best to get an autographed copy of the new book, Deception. The reason I know he's going to do that is because when we had Mr. Timmerman here before as a New York Times published author, uh, Mr. Davis asked for and received a personal signed copy of the book, and he's been fussing at his pastor because the pastor lost it. 
Well, I'm here to tell you I have found the book. <laughs> and it has a message in there uh, to the colonel. And uh, so, colonel, I got your book. I don't know what you did with the cover of it, but I do have the book. It's not here. It's downstairs. <laughs> He's looking for it already. Okay. I'm but anyway, um, you'll be able to get a copy of either of Ken Timmerman's book. But in all honesty, now, Ken, don't get mad at me for this, but in all honesty, I hope people come buy your book. But in all honesty, if you're interested in the Benghazi situation, I would like to introduce you to the man that I call Mr. Benghazi. Because on the 27th day of September, three years ago, the United States government probationed Nakula Basila Nakula, probationed him out to the notorious. Wiley S. Drake. And so uh, I would like to introduce you because he will be there. There's two events. One of them is going to be here at the First Southern Baptist Church. That'll be at 12 noon on the 25th. And then at 7 p.m., we're going to take a little trip to Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard, and we're going to have Nakula Basila Nakula. And you can come and shake hands with him and pray with him and pray for him and see the man that was blamed for Benghazi by Thunder Thigh Hillary and the long-legged Mac Daddy, Barry Satoro. Thunder Thigh's I've coined. The long-legged Mac Daddy comes from my pastor, who's a black man in New York, and he calls him the long-legged Mac Daddy. And I know a little bit about black culture, and I know a little bit about what a uh, Mac Daddy is. This is a family TV show, so I can't go into too much detail <laughs> about what a Mac Daddy is, but you'll have to find that out. Or call Dr. James David Manning, and he'll explain it to you as Ricky used to say to Lucy. Ricky would say, Lucy, you got to explain that. <laughs> so uh, call up Dr. Manning and say, Dr. Manning, what do you mean by long-legged Mac Daddy? you got to explain that. <laughs> and Dr. Manning will be more than happy to explain that. He was explaining this morning on his show about how he uses the term ass as a pastor. He says, because it's in the Bible. And he also explained, or explained, uh, how he uses the word damn, because he said it come out of Jesus' mouth. And also, he explained why he uses the word hell, because it's in the Bible. And so, uh, call Dr. James David Manning and let him Explain it to you, if you would, please. Now, folks, we only have about five minutes, and I'm going to ask Dr. James Stephen Davis if there's anything else he'd like to share. Well, certainly we'll have more information for tonight's show uh, in light of uh, Filipini being here tomorrow, or tonight, today, uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, we... Uh, we'll also be talking more tonight about what happened at the vice president's uh, debate because I'll have a chance to get a little more info on that. And then, of course, we're going to be talking about the training coming up on the 22nd and then that major event coming up on the 25th when we're going to be uh, hosting Ken Timmerman. Amen. All right, sir. Thank you so much. And we have another boots on the ground here in the studio with us. And I'm going to turn the camera right around here, and we're going to get uh, Brother Gary, who uh, is a very faithful, as he can be. He has to work. he got this strange habit of wanting to eat on a regular basis. So, so he has to work for a living. But Brother Gary is a prayer warrior and part of the, one of the appointed, by me, appointed deputy prayer warriors 
for the Congressional Prayer Conference. And, and he keeps telling me he don't have a badge and trying to hint at me at having some badge. <laughs> badge. But anyway, Gary, lead us in prayer, would you please? Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the many blessings you give to us this day and every day. Uh, we come to you, Father, and ask your blessing on those that, that protect us, uh, on our, mil our military, both uh, here and overseas. We ask you to bless them, protect them. Uh, all of our law enforcement uh, here in our country, the, the federal, uh, state, local, uh, all the men and women in, in blue uh, that, that get up every day and go out and protect our communities. Uh, all the uh, firefighters and first responders, the EMTs, just everybody that, that serves their country and community, uh, Border Patrol and Harbor Patrol and uh, prison guards and you know, all these people that uh, Amen. You know, uh, work for very little money to you know, protect their community and their country. We ask your blessing on them, their, your protection. Uh, for those who have uh, been injured in line of duty, we ask your healing uh, on them. Uh, help them recover and, and come back to their families. And communities. Yes, Lord. And especially, Lord, for the, uh, the families of those who lost loved ones, mm, yes, uh, whether yes. fighting overseas or, you know, uh, putting on the badge here in our country. Uh, please bless them. Uh, put some peace in their hearts and understanding and, you know, help them know they'll, they'll see their loved ones when they come to see you. Yes, and Lord. we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Brother Gary, thank you for being a faithful prayer deputy, a prayer warrior here in the prayer room, and for others that show up as well, and uh, Mr. Davis. But I would uh, correct you one spot there that I'm going to get in a little bit of trouble because of your prayer, because uh, one of the guys is going to call me and say, remind Gary that not all police wear blue. The Sheriff's well, Department wears green. I know. <laughs> Mom. But no, nah, that's all I'm only picking. That's just picking at you. Well, brother. boys and blue was a term that. Boys and blue, that's right. Amen. General term. Amen, general term. And that thin blue line. Some goes, more khaki, some yeah, more green. That's right, that's right. Different colors. But anyway, we do thank you for watching today. We want to remind you that in uh, uh, just about two hours at 12 noon, California time, we will be interviewing Phil Haney downstairs in our studio and uh, then he'll be down in Mission Viejo tonight down there at a special meeting of ACT America the organization the Mission Viejo chapter of Brigitte Gabrielle's organization ACT for America he'll be speaking down there again tonight and we praise the Lord for that and we do want to remind you there's a lot of other things coming up Dr. Davis, would you give out your text number so if people would like to have more information on the training in handguns and self-defense, uh, they can get in touch with you and talk about that. Or if they have other questions about how do you get your bald head to shine so well uh, or anything else they'd like to ask you, how can they get in touch with you? My number, as always, is 951 Two six one zero seven nine nine. Text uh, one word subject so I know what it is. And then also text your name and return phone number, and I will get a hold of you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here in the prayer room. It is time for us. Anybody else on the prayer line? The telephone line. If not, um, Hannah, I would like oh, okay. to find out. Phil um, Haney, what was the, did you say you write a book? What was the name of the book? The name of his book is See Something, Say Nothing. Oh, okay, thank you. And that was written based on the fact that they kept telling him, even if you see something about San Bernardino, say nothing, and people died, mm -hmm. and on and on it went. And uh, so that book is called See Something, Say Nothing. And it's available on Amazon and, and uh, uh, you know, all the bookstores and everything. It's called See Something, Say Nothing. Thank you. All right, Miss Hannah, thank you so much. We're going to say good day, God bless you, and thank you for calling in, and thank you for being on the party line. Thank you.
All right, that hangs up the party line, and now we're going to stop the camera.